So could you please welcome to Minister the Word today, Pastor John Griffiths. Very good. How you doing? I tell you what, it is good to be on the Gold Coast. You are blessed to live on the Gold Coast. I mean, it, 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 is, it must take a, a huge sacrifice to you for you to live, live on the Gold Coast. My goodness. Are these guys going to disappear for a sec? Very good. Well done, band. Well done, musos. Brilliant. Uh, it is awesome to be here. Uh, you need to know that uh, my wife and I, we love your pastors. Ben and Trish and their three boys are absolutely brilliant. We've known them for 20 years, Bible college. So this is 1998, 97, over 20 years. I'm not quite sure whether that makes us old, but you need to know that Ben and Trish, Pastor Ben and Pastor Trish, they are awesome people. If, if you agree with me, why don't you just sort of nod your head and just, yeah, they are, they are brilliant. And uh, you, you are blessed to have them as pastors. Uh, up on the screen, I'm hoping that I've got a picture of my family uh, to show you. I've been married for 20 years, and um, Ben and Trish would, uh, would know Nicole. And uh, they don't call it uh, Bible college, they call it bridal college, because that's where you go to meet your wife. Is that right, Pastor Ben? That's where you go. And so in the middle there is our family. This is Nicole. We've been married for uh, 21 years, and uh, she is amazing, incredible, uh, in the top there, we have four children, two boys, two girls. Uh, that's one thing that the Natoko family could not do. They could only get on one side of the equation, three boys. But we have two boys and two girls. It's perfect. It's even. It's beautiful. It's done. And it's over. And we have twins. I'm a twin. And I said to my wife when we got married that we are going to have twins. And so she said, well, if you organize it with God, then so be it. And so I prayed and we had twins. And Zachary and Isabella, they are top and bottom. So Zachary and Isabella are 13, nearly 14. And uh, Zachary is all things sport and all things soccer and all things Brisbane Broncos and Brisbane Lions. And if it's sport, me and him are watching it. Isabella is all things dance and drama and singing and ballet and girly stuff. So I struggle with that, but it's, it's good that we have sort of, you know, the, the best of both worlds. Micah in the middle, this was a special photo taken. Micah is uh, 10, it could be 11. I might need Nicole here to clarify that. Um, that was taken at his water baptism. And so it's wonderful for parents to see your kids grow up in the house of the Lord. Micah is, uh, they reckon he's a little bit like me, so mischievous or cheeky or a pastor's kid. Have you got one of those mischievous kids, Pastor Ben? No, they're all good, are they? They're all perfect. Okay. And then Emily on the top left, she is our youngest. I'm pretty sure she is seven or eight, one of those two. And uh, she is adorable. And that is the Griffiths family. Uh, we live in Adelaide, South Australia. We pastor in a church called Life Point Church. Uh, pastor David Hall is our senior pastor. And uh, God is so gracious to us. Over the last 12 months, we've seen our church probably grow by about three to 400. Uh, we have seen a, a real move of God, people being saved and people being added. And, and God is just so gracious. It's great to be with you here this morning. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of... Ephesians. I'm thrilled to hear of a miracle. I'm thrilled to hear of, of your foot working. Uh, I know that maybe you've already received your miracle, but I, I'd love to pray for, is it Michelle again? Uh, this morning in our church in Adelaide, we were praying for a little boy called Logan. Logan is 14 months old and he's been diagnosed. There's something wrong with his hip. So you had something wrong with your ankle. Uh, Logan in our church this morning, we were praying for his hip. It's displaced or it's not right or it's wrong or it's too big or too small. It's, it's not working. It's a fairly major operation to fix it. And I, I want to pray for Logan this morning. He's just been diagnosed or the beginning stages of a diagnosis for cerebral palsy. And so that sort of changes his world and his family's world. And our church is believing for a miracle. Is this a miracle-believing church? 
Is, is this a church that believes that God can heal today? Is this a church that believes that ankles can be restored and, and hips can be made whole? My cousin over the last 12 months, I don't know if you remember Emma. And my, my cousin Emma is about my age. She's about 42, 43. She had this little spot on her, her finger. Uh, they, they reckon it was from maybe driving her car, and, and it was a sunspot or, or a melanoma, and so they took it out. It was a nasty little sort of... It was, it, six months later, she then had a spot here, a lump here, and they, they took that out. And then six months later, she had this thing under her arm, and they took that out. And then they said to her, uh, it should be okay from here. But six months later, they had a scan. And if you've had a scan for cancer, it's these white dots. And she had white dots everywhere. She had white dots in her in stomach, in her liver, in her kidney, in, in her legs. She had it everywhere. She had it in her brain that there was size of the uh, walnuts, if, if you're into walnuts. And, and she, had this, she was riddled with cancer. The doctors said to her, you need to cash in your super and go on a holiday while you can. But we didn't accept that. We said, no way, that, that, that's, that's not how we play the game. That's not what we believe. And so we prayed for my cousin Emma. I've got a reminder on my phone, 9 o'clock every morning, to pray for my cousin Emma. Uh, a couple of months ago, she had another scan. And every cancer cell in her body, except her brain, every cancer cell, all those white dots have miraculously gone. She had four, she had four walnuts. She had four walnuts in her head. Uh, this sounds terrible. She, she had four uh, uh, lumps in her brain that have gone down to one. And what was five centimeters is now five millimeters. I'm super excited for the next scan because God is a miracle working God. Why don't you lift up your hands? We're going to pray. God, we thank you for what you've done in Michelle's life. Lord, we thank you for this healing power. Lord, we thank you for this ankle that is whole. We thank you, Lord, for this bone that has miraculously sort of been healed. God, we thank you for your healing power. Lord, for this little boy, Logan, we thank you, Lord, that you are at work in his life. Lord, what the doctors have said is going to be impossible. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching him right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my cousin Emma, I give you praise and I give you glory. Lord, you are a miracle-working God. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to continue to work in her life in the name of Jesus. Lord, for the needs that are represented here this morning, I thank you, Lord, that you are at work. I thank you, Lord, that you are raising us up. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing our bodies. I thank you, Lord, that we're being set free from cancer. I thank you, Lord, that your healing power that you paid for at the cross of Calvary by your blood, we are healed. And I thank you, Lord, that your miracles are available to us today. And Lord, we testify of your goodness in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Uh, Ephesians 3, have you got your Bibles? Always good to bring your Bibles to church. Uh, in case there's a temptation out there. <laughs> Ephesians 3, it says these were. Ephesians 3 and verse 14. Now I think of all this, have you got it? Yeah. Ephesians 3 and verse 14, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious, everyone say glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide and long and high and deep is His love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great for you and I to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God." Here's the best verse. You ready? Put your seatbelts on. Just sort of, sort of, sort of grab, grab, a, grab, grab a hold because this, this will shake you. Now, all glory to God who is able. Now, all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than what we might ask or think 
Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. God, as we spend time in your word, we thank you, Lord, that your word's going to build us up and encourage us. We thank you, Lord, that as we come in your presence, Lord, we're going to leave different in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, now, where is that guy who is the brainiac? Has he disappeared, gone out to kids' church? Where, where is he? Where, where is Dr. Scott? Come on, Dr. Scott. Come and join me up on stage just for a moment. I haven't prepped him for this, but Scott, I am just in awe of your braininess. Like, I, I consider myself to be a fairly simple person. I, 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 I'm, not a, I, I'm not very smart, but... I've heard that you are incredibly smart. I have heard, I have heard that if we would have a competition in this room, you would be the smartest person in the room. Is this not true? Now, now, oh, is that your dad saying no? Now, I, I've heard that you've just graduated or finished something or, or you, you're going to become a brain surgeon or... or you're super smart. So, so, Scott, I just need you to help me with, with what would be an illustration this morning. Uh, sometimes life, you feel a little bit empty. But what you do, Scott, sometimes in life, you come to church and, and, and you praise Jesus up on stage and they sing your favorite song and it's almost like God fills us. God fills us with His presence and with His power, and God is so good. Is that how you feel in life sometimes, Scott? But then the challenges of life come, and they drain you. Is that right? So just take a, take a squig, Scott, and, and, and th this, this is how life works. But Scott spends time in the Word of God every day, and, and Scott's praying and believing, and he feels refreshed, and, and God is good. But it was an early morning, he had, to, he had to sing up on stage and he had to get out of bed a little bit earlier and, and it sort of drained him a little bit. But, but hot August nights was happening and he felt refreshed and he got a prophecy and, and God is good. But this is how life is sometimes. Scott talks to a girl, and the girl talks back. Is this right, Dad? Not yet. And Scott's feeling good. And life, is this the same for you and me? Life will will either fill you up or life will empty you. Life is, is good, and, and life is, is... This is the last one, Scott. It's, it's okay. Big round of applause for Scott. Uh, th this, this is how it works. Life, life can either rob you or, or, or life can invigorate you. Life will either take from you or, or, or life will actually fill you up. Now, as Christians, we, we understand that God fills us and, and God fills us with power and, and purpose. But, but life, even as Christians, can, can take away. We, we can get... I hope your dad's not here. We can get run over by our dads. We, 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 the bad things happen to good people and, and it robs us of our joy and it, it robs us of all the good things sometimes. And, and even in life, we, we can look up to God and say, where are you? But, but I would pray this morning that as we spend time in, in God's word, that, that God's word would, would fill you. I would pray that as we spend time in, in God's house, that, that God's house would bless you this morning. I would pray that as we spend time in God's presence, that His presence would help you and encourage you. And Ephesians 3 is one of the greatest passages found in the Bible. Now to Him who is able. Ephesians 3 says that out of His glorious riches, He will strengthen you. I'm not quite sure how you feel in life today, but the Bible says, there's a promise in the Bible that out of his glorious riches, that he will strengthen you. The idea of his greatness, 
and compared maybe to my weakness. The, the idea of his vastness maybe compared to my smallness. The idea of his endlessness compared to my struggle in life. His glorious riches will strengthen me. This is what happened to you, Michelle. Your ankle was weak, but out of his glorious riches, he strengthened you. This is what happens in our lack in our lack, is that what you said, Noah? In what we have very little of, in what we think we need to keep, out of his glorious riches, he strengthens us. John chapter 1 says that he is full of grace and that he is full of truth. Full of grace and full of truth. David says in 2 Samuel that he is, his mercy is great. The psalmist says that he is forgiving and that he is a God abounding in love. Sometimes when I look at my four kids, I'm not abounding in love. Sometimes when my wife looks at me, she is not abounding in love. But the idea of God that he is rich in love and that he is abounding in love out of his glorious riches, he is strengthening you. There is no number, Dr. Dr. Scott, that there is no number that can capture him. There is no single word that can encapsulate him. There is no beginning and there is no end that can encircle him. He is great and he is everlasting and he is faithful and he is true. But the psalmist says in Psalm 22, sometimes I am a worm. The psalmist says sometimes it feels like I have nothing. Sometimes it feels, God, that you are so far away. And I'm sure each and every one of us could testify of the struggles that we go through when it feels like our cup is empty. God, where are you? But the Bible says, out of his glorious riches, he is strengthening you. Maybe you've come into church this morning discouraged and depressed and downcast, but out of his glorious riches, he can strengthen you. Maybe you've come in depressed, but you can leave after being found in the presence of God, inspired and encouraged. When I'm weak, he makes me strong. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I stumble, he carries me. When I can't go on, he holds me. He leads me. He makes a way through, through the desert, the dry times. Out of his glorious riches, he is strengthening us. It says in Ephesians 3 that he's strengthening us by his spirit in our inner being. In our inner being, he, he is strengthening us right now. The church that we pastor in Adelaide, it's right next to a gym. And people walk into a gym. They, they have their arms out and they, they sort of walk with their legs like, like the, I don't know what they're doing, but they walk in sort of like this and, 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 they, and they, they, they pump iron. I'm not really a gym person because I don't like the pain. But they, they, so they, they, they work on the external. You, you know what we're doing right now? We're, we're working on the internal. Because out of his glorious riches, he is strengthening you. And the Spirit of God is strengthening your inner being. Coming to church on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. is not some religious act that you and I do. Coming to church on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we are strengthening our inner being in the spirits of God. John chapter 7 refers to the Spirit as rivers of living water. And when you're feeling empty in life, and when you're feeling down in life, it's the Spirit of God that, that fills us over and over again. We, we need the river to flow. We need the river to flow every Sunday morning. We need the river to flow every Sunday night. We need more of the river of God. It's my prayer, Pastor Ben, that the river of God would flow in this church. It's my prayer that the river of God would flow in, in your life, that the rivers of living water would rise within and life, if you allow it, will rob you. Life, if you allow it, will empty your life. Life, if you allow it, will leave you with nothing. But the Spirit of God will strengthen your inner being. Matthew 25 refers to the Spirit as oil. He'll strengthen us in our, in our inner being. Now, now, Pastor Ben, I'm not quite sure if this has happened to you, but uh, sometimes uh, after 20 years of, 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 of growing and, and being a man, we get old. 
and, and when we roll out of bed, we, we sort of, oh, my knees aren't working and my, my back's not working. Does, does this happen to some people out, out there? Sometimes when you get out of bed in the morning, it's like, oh. But it's at that moment I know exactly what to do. I go down to the kitchen. Right next to our microwave is this little uh, 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 container of tablets. It's some fish oil tablets. And when I get up in the morning and my knees don't work, I pop two fish oil tablets. I'm glad that they're tablets and not fish oil off the spoon, cod liver oil. Did, did any of your parents make you, make you get that cod liver oil? Is it, oh my goodness. Uh, I pop a couple of tablets and, and within a day, my, my, my knees start working again. And, and it's like the, the, the oil is, is sort of working its way into the joints. And Matthew 25 talks about the, the Holy Spirit being oil. And just as the Holy Spirit is a river, we also need the oil of God. I pray that this church, that, that King's Church, would, would, would know the oil of God. That if you allow religion to sort of come in, it, it'll seize it up and, and it won't be able to flow. But the oil of God will come and you'll fill your cup over and over again. I, I, drive this, um, I drive this moto vehicle. It's called a, a Jeep, a, a Jeep Cherokee. And, and it's an older car, but it's leather trim and, and wood grain, and it's, it's nice and, and it's fun. My, my, my Jeep Cherokee has this problem. It, it, it leaks oil. I, I said to my mechanic, you know, I, I, is it a problem? He said, the only problem it's for is your driveway. Your driveway is going to get dirty. And so I said, okay, do I, do I need to fix it? He said, no, you don't need to fix it. As long as you put more oil in than it's coming out. As long as more oil goes in than what's coming out, you'll be okay. And so I, I sort of went and bought a, a, a four-liter, ten-liter bottle of oil, and I was sort of putting oil in there every couple of months, and it was making a mess in my driveway, and it's like, oh, I got to the end of the bottle of the oil, and I thought to myself, no, nah, my, my car doesn't need a top-up of oil. It, it runs okay without oil. I don't need to top it up. And after a couple of months, I realized that it doesn't leak oil anymore. And so I think I've solved the problem. But who knows that my Jeep Cherokee one day is going to stop running. People have told me, oh, those things run forever. And I say, yes, they do. I don't even have to put any oil in it anymore. It doesn't leak oil. I fixed it. But eventually it will stop. And here's the reality of what would be a Christian life. Here's the reality for you and me. Eventually, without the oil of God, eventually, without the river of God, our lives will come to a grinding halt. We need the Spirit of God to strengthen our innermost being, our, our inner man. We, we need the river of God. We need the oil of God. Acts 2 talks about the Spirit being a wind, being a violent wind. Luke 3 gives a picture of the dove coming upon Jesus and the dove represents peace and the peace of God. We need the peace of God upon our warring hearts. Ephesians refers to the Spirit as a seal marked by Him. The book of Acts, a sound from heaven, fire of God. We need all of these things to strengthen our innermost being. And this is what God does for us. When we're feeling empty, when we're feeling dry, when we're feeling like there's nothing left, when we're feeling like God's not answering our prayer, our request, our miracle, we need to understand that by His glorious riches, He is strengthening us by His Spirit in our innermost being. I could do a, a, a sort of a, a, I could do a, what, what's it called? A, um, I, I could ask everyone, a poll. I could ask everyone. How long have you been saved? And I would imagine there would be someone in this room that has been saved for more than 50 years. Just give me a wave, more than 50 years. Oh, well done, good and faithful. Well, you, 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 don't, you don't need the river of God anymore. You, you, you don't, you, you've proven that, you've proven that you... You don't need God's favor. You don't need God's blessing. and You don't need the river of God. You don't need the oil of God. It's okay. You've done so well. But is, is that true? It's, it's not true at all. Whether you've been saved for five days or 500 years, the, the reality is each and every one of us, we, we need the Spirit of God to strengthen our innermost being. It says in Ephesians 3 that Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. 
Is this what I read? Is this what you and I read before? He, he dwells in our hearts through faith. We use the phrase, I am in Christ, and then we also use the phrase that Christ is in me. And so I am in Christ, but Christ is in me. And this is what Ephesians talks about. We invite him in at salvation, and he lives in me, but we are also in him. Romans 8 says, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 says, if anyone is In Christ, he is a new creation. And so the idea is that Christ is in me and I am in Christ and Christ dwells in my heart through faith. And so when I go through life and the trials and the difficulties and the circumstances that sort of empty my life, I need to remind myself of the word of God that Christ dwells in my heart. We need to remind ourselves whether we are young in the faith or whether we are old in the faith, that Christ dwells in my heart. And so this week, when you're feeling alone, Christ is in you. This week, when the enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy, Christ is in you. This week, when trouble arrives and and comes knocking at the door, Christ is in you. Now, there will be someone here this morning where it's their duty to lock up. Who's on duty to lock up? Who is that person? Who is locking up this morning? There will be someone. Rob, it has to be you, Rob. If if no one's rostered on, it's now Rob. Just just roster Rob on. to, to. There will be someone to lock up. When everyone's gone and Rob is doing the alarm or pressing the button, Rob will say the words, Goodbye, Jesus. See you next week, Jesus. Rob will say the words, goodbye, Holy Spirit, it's been good, we'll see you next week. No, that's not how it works. Christ dwells in us, in our hearts, and when we leave, we don't leave God in some stained glass building. Christ goes with us and before us and and helps us. It's not that we leave Him here on a Sunday, but He goes with us during the week, and out of His glorious riches, He will strengthen you in your inner being, in your inner being. By His Spirit, you are strengthened. Why? Because Christ dwells in your hearts. You need to look at yourself again and you need to understand that you are a child of God and that Christ dwells in your hearts through faith. And this is what God does for us. This is what God does for you and for me. Ephesians 3 says that we, you and me, are to be established and rooted in love. It's the story of Jesus that he tells about the two people that build. The foolish man, he builds his house upon the sand and when the storm comes, it's washed away. But a a wise man will build his house upon the rock and when the storm comes, there there is a firm foundation. I remember living in Adelaide, our house, there was this tree in the driveway. This tree didn't have any leaves in it. It was a sort of about yay high. And and I said to Nicole, my wife, maybe sort of springtime that the leaves will come, but spring sort of came and went and this tree had no leaves and after about 12 months we realized that this tree wasn't a very healthy tree and so I said to Nicole I'm going to do some gardening and I'm going to take this tree out and so I sort of got my hand around the the, the stump of the tree and I gave it one little reef and it came out instantly as I grabbed it, it was, it was rotten. It sort of flaked in my hands. It was, it was so easy to remove because the, the roots were just all rotten. We lived in the Sunshine Coast for 15 years. I was a youth pastor there. Uh, my wife and I, we planted a church there. We lived in Nambour, Queensland. Anyone been to Nambour before? I noticed that there was a caravan and camping show in Nambour next week. I thought to myself, I won't go to that. Uh, we lived in Nambour for many, many years, and, and at the front of our house, there, there was this palm tree. And it, do you know what a palm tree is? A, a palm tree is one of those annoying trees that drops berries, and, and those palm fronds, that one palm frond will fill up your wheelie bin. Just one will fill up your wheelie bin. And so they just fall all the time. And I, there was this palm tree at the front of our house and I wanted to build this deck out the front and the palm tree was in the way. And so I thought to myself, I'm going to remove the palm. And so I got a guy over. Did you know Hayden? Remember Hayden Oswald? Hayden, Hayden Kiley? Hayden came over with his chainsaw and down it went and I just had this stump. And I thought, I'll be able to get rid of that stump. No worries. 
So I got the mattock out, I got the shovel out, and I started to dig around this stump of this palm tree, and it took me six months, three afternoons a week, to dig this tree root out. A palm tree has these finger-like roots that are just entwined. And oh my goodness, I started it. I had to finish it. I couldn't leave it. It took me forever. But it was rooted. It was established. You know, one tree that's not rooted, it comes out easy. The other one that is established, it's harder. And Ephesians tells us that you and I are to be rooted and established in love. What we're doing here on a Sunday morning is we are being rooted and established in love. When the pastor tells you to turn around and say hello to someone, what we're doing is we're being rooted and established in love. When we meet midweek for a connect meeting or a home fellowship or whatever it is, we are rooted and established in love. Hang on a second, John. You you say love? Love will chew you up and spit you out. Love will hurt you and mess with you and it'll destroy you. Love will make you bitter and twisted and rotten. Love will empty your glass. Love will hurt you. But here we read the love that surpasses understanding. I can't understand it, but, but, but hang on a second. This love is different. Maybe it's a love that's patient and kind. Maybe it's a love that does not envy and boast. Maybe it's a love that is not self-seeking and does not anger and keep a record of wrongs. Maybe it's a love that protects and trusts and hopes and perseveres. This love is different. This is the love that the world does not know. Colossians 3 tells us that, that we are to put on love. It's a choice, like we put on a jacket that we are to put on love, just like on a Sunday, we we put on the garments of praise. So too, Colossians tells us that we are to put on love. And so when we speak to one another, we, we put on love. It's a choice to love. And Colossians 3 says this love, it binds us together. The love of Christ, it binds us together. And so it says that we are to be rooted and established in love. 1 John 4 says that the love of God and that we are to love one another. Go on, just turn to your neighbor and give him a wink. Go on, just, just, I know it's your spouse, and I know you haven't done it for 47 years, but just, just give them a wink. Maybe after service, you could go up to Pastor Ben and Pastor Trish and say, we love you. Maybe after service, you, you could say to the people that are looking after the kids, we, we really appreciate all that you do. Maybe you could say to the, the musicians, hey, you do a great job. It's the love that binds us together. You're struggling in life, you need more of the love of God. You're feeling isolated in life, you need more of the love of from the Father in heaven. You're feeling like your cup is empty. You're feeling like it's dry. You need more of the love of God to forgive and to forget. You need more of God's love. The hurts and the pains and the memories, the wrongs that have been done to you that have left your cup dry. You need more of the love. I can't describe it. I can't even begin to understand it, but it is the love of God that is high and wide and... and We need more of the love of God. So husbands, can I speak to the husbands for a moment? We need to love our wives more. We need to lay our life down just as Christ laid his life down for for the children. We need to love our our wives more. Ladies, can I I speak to you for a moment? We we need more massages and coffee and and, 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 and what else do we want, guys? Um, uh, um, we, we, We need more love. We need to love one another. Here's the thing, when, when a marriage break down, when, when a marriage breaks down, the, the, the love goes. But, but it's, a, it's a choice to love, and, and it's a choice to receive the love of God. You see, before Christ, I was at war with God, and I was at war with mankind. This is what it says. Brothers were at war with one another. Cain and Abel, we were at war with God and war with one another. But Christ has reconciled us to God and has reconciled us to one another. And it is the love of Christ that, that fills us for, for, for love for Him. And it is the love of Christ that fills our lives for for one another. We need more love. If you were to rename the church, you could rename it King's Love Church. Love King's Church. Love Church. We just need more love. 
the, the love that surpasses understanding, God's love. And if you find yourself a little bit empty, you just need to receive God's love. And if you find yourself a little bit hurt and broken, you just need to receive God's love. How wide and high and long and deep. You can't get over it, you can't get under it, but I reckon maybe we can go on an exciting journey together where we experience and know the love of God. Ephesians says these words, that you will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Psalm 23 says that your cup will overflow. I mean, I could make a mess right now. I could get a, another bottle and I could, I could overflow that and it could, it could overflow. And, and we've come to hot August nights and it feels like there, there's an overflow and we've been blessed and we've been blessed. And, and God wants to continually fill your life. Romans 13 says that the God of hope, he wants to fill your life with, with, with joy and peace. And as you trust in him, this is what it says, as you trust in him, that the God of hope, there will be an overflow of hope in your life. God, God is an overflowing God. That he, he wants to fill you with, with, with all that he has. God, God wants to fill your life. And I don't know what has emptied your life because if every one of us are honest, life will empty us. But God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you over and over and over again. And if you allow it, life will get on top of you. And if you allow it, depression will come. And if you allow it, sickness will come. And if you allow it, you get depressed because the kids aren't coming to church anymore. And if you allow it, I don't have any money left anymore. And if you allow it, life will rob you. But God wants to fill you over and over and over again. But sometimes life is so difficult that we find ourselves with an empty cup. I could take the next 30 seconds and drink that, but let's just pretend it's empty. And we say to ourselves, God, I just, I just, I just feel so empty. I just feel so isolated. God, I feel so dry. God, where, where, where are you in my life? Pastor John from Adelaide came and he preached from Ephesians 3 and he, and he says that, you know, out of your glorious riches you'll fill me. And he said that, Christ, you dwell in my heart and rooted and established in love and blah, 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 blah. But I just feel so empty. And Ephesians 3 says, now to him who is able. I'd imagine, Michelle, that you felt pretty empty. I'd imagine that you would have felt pretty bad. I'd imagine that maybe there, there was no future sort of that you could see to some degree in some areas. And, and life will do this, the, the diagnosis from the doctor, but now, now to him who is able. We, we look at our kids and we think they're so far away from God. Now to him who is able. We, we look at the financial challenge that's before us and, and we say it's impossible, but now to him who is able. But Pastor Ben, we, we look at church and school and juggling that and, and uh, care, care arm and, and you, you get haircuts after church. It's incredible. I mean, you're juggling all of that, Pastor Ben, it, it's, it's so impossible. Now to him who is able. Pastor Trish, three boys. One of your boys is an overseas professional soccer player. Oh my goodness. He, he, all the challenges that we face, now to him who is able. And if you allow it, the challenges will rob you and minimize you and life will kick you when you are down. But we can actually have a mindset that says, God, you are able. And it says, glory to him. The glory is not for us. Look how full my life is. The glory is not to say, oh, look, look, look. Look at me. The glory is simply to him. The challenges that we face, the, the difficulties that, that we all have, now glory to him because he is able. Why don't you close your eyes just for a moment. Maybe the, the band can come. I want you to think about the biggest challenge that you have right now. And I'm going to say this, these simple words. You thinking about that challenge? Now to him who is able. Maybe you're buying a house, maybe your financial challenges, now to him who is able. Maybe you're looking for that business or that breakthrough, now to him who is able. Maybe you've got to go to the doctor this week, now to him who is able. Maybe they've said you've got to take that pill every day of your life, now to him who is able. 
Maybe your kids are away from the Lord. Maybe, maybe your kids are far away from now to him who is able. Maybe you can't seem to sort of get up each morning with, with, with a smile. Now to him who is able. Maybe you've been praying and praying and praying and you haven't seen the, the answer. Now to him who is able. I'm not quite sure of the challenge that you face, but I, I just want to say to you these words. He is able. He is able. The dreams that you have, the prayers that you've been praying, He is able. But God, I thank You that these wonderful people here this morning, God, there are all sorts of needs and challenges that are represented. But I thank You, Lord, that You are able. Lord, for the giants that we face, Lord, for the walls that are before us, we thank You, Lord, that You are able. Lord, for those impossible situations. Lord, we thank you that you are able. Lord, we give you praise for miracles that we've heard about. Lord, ankles that have been made whole, cancer that's gone. Lord, we thank you that you are able. But Lord, I pray right now out of your glorious riches, Lord, that you would strengthen us. Lord, the challenges that come that seem to empty us. Lord, the challenges that come and depart us. God, we thank you that you are able. I thank you, Lord, that out of your glorious riches, you are strengthening us now. I wonder maybe right where you're sitting, maybe you can just raise your hands towards the Lord and allow the Spirit of God to strengthen you. Allow the river of God to fill you right now. Whatever is before you this week, whatever challenge you face, Whatever has robbed you of your joy or, or, or made you a half glass empty person, the river of God can strengthen you right now. Now to Him who is able. God, we all face challenges. But thank you, Lord, that you're helping each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, the giants that stand before us, God, they're going to be toppled. Thank you, Lord, for the walls of impossibility. Lord, they're going to come down. Thank you, Lord, for the rivers that we can't seem to cross. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to make a way. We're going to walk through on dry ground. And God, we say that you're able. So right now, by your Holy Spirit, strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen our inner being. Whether we've been saved for one week or 500 weeks, Lord, strengthen us. Whether we're in church for the first time this morning or whether we've been in church our whole life, thank you, God, that we can come into your presence and you can strengthen us. And Lord, that's what you're doing by your Holy Spirit right now. You're strengthening us. Thank you, Lord, no matter what challenge we face, God, you go before us and you are able. Lord, I do pray for miracles. God, I pray for miracles of healing. God, I pray for miracles of provision. God, I pray for miracles of family being restored. God, I pray for a miracle of a church growing. Lord, you go before us. You are able. And I thank you, Lord, that you fill us with power, and that you strengthen us, and that you dwell within our hearts, that we're rooted and established in love. And thank you, Lord, that you fill our lives with your fullness. God, you are good. You are good. You are good. God, yet again, we commit our lives to you. I wonder while every eye is closed just for a moment, when I say those words, we commit our lives to you. I wonder if there is someone here this morning that has never committed their life to him. Maybe you found yourself in church. Maybe you've been in church before and you've walked away. You need to say, John, I need to get my life right with God. See, the reality is each and every one of us, we either face life or we face death. Right now, it might seem like we are invincible, but one day we shall stand before God and there'll be a choice, life and death. But we don't make that choice when we stand before God. We make that choice here and now. And every one of us have a choice, life or death. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never chosen Jesus. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never said, I've never surrendered my life to Him. I'd love to give you that opportunity and so while every head is bowed and every eye closed if if that's you and you say John I, I need Jesus in my life I want you to lift up your head and I want you to lift up your hand and say John I need Jesus in my life while every head is bowed and every eye closed why don't you lift up your hand and say John I, I need Jesus in my life I need his presence I need his help 
I need Jesus in my life. We're going to say a simple prayer. Every one of us are going to say this prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come on, let's say it all together. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I need you as my Lord and Saviour. And I say yes to you. Come into my life. Dwell in my heart. Fill me with strength. And fill me with power. In Jesus' name. Why don't you stand your feet just for a moment? I really believe that God's going to give you a miracle this week. I really believe that a miracle of Michelle is available to you. I reckon we could sing that second last song. Is that the second last song? And there's like a bridge bit to it. I'm not a musician, so I don't really know what what it is. There's a bridge bit to it. And, And I want to stamp my foot when you sing it. All the earth was shouts and praise. And as we sing that, I wonder maybe you could lift up your hands and believe for a miracle. I wonder as we sing that, you could lift your hands and and believe that your cup will be filled up. I wonder as we sing that, faith could rise and faith could stir in your heart and God would do something amazing. A miracle would come. So we're going to sing. And I want you to lift up your voice. And I want you to lift up your hands. Stomp your feet like me if you want.